we are going to go completely through the Bible. All right. You got your Bible? You have, what version do you have? I have the NIV. You have the NIV. What one do you have? King James. You have the King James. You have the King James and the New King James. Uh, you have just the King James version. Okay. And I have a King James version. And I have uh, a giant print because <laughs> I am 50. <laughs> Not to have bifocals. Let's talk, about, let's talk about the rules of Bible study. First of all, Bible study is designed to put the Word of God into your own heart. And it's going to be, it, there's going to be a lot of benefits. Uh, my jar's not working, right, is it? From studying the Bible. Let's look and see, first of all, modern religion has it that you come to the sanctuary and you worship God, you read your Bible in the sanctuary. Everything that deals with religion has to revolve around the church house. But that's not the way it originally started. Look at uh, Acts chapter 16. And let's talk about where the proper place to begin a Bible study really is. Acts 16 and verse number 32. Acts 16. Uh, Dolan, read for me. And they spake unto him with the word of God. They spake the Lord, unto him the word of the Lord. Unto all that were in his house. They were where? In his house. In his house. They spoke the word of God in the house, in the home. All right? Look at, look at, just flip the page to chapter 17 and verse number 11. The, the best place to begin Bible study is always in the home. I, I, I like to say it like this. It is really difficult to establish a wonderful family unless the family has a common thread of authority, a common thread of standards of decency and morale and morals and character. And, and that's what the Bible is all about, is how to establish your home in a godly order. All right, look at 17 and verse number 11. Uh, Angie? Now the Bereans? Uh, Thessal Thessalonians? They, they might have been called Bereans, okay. Were of more noble character than the Thessalonians. Oh, yeah, okay. For they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day. They what? Examined the scriptures every day. They searched the scriptures or they examined the scriptures every day. To see if what Paul said was true. Okay. Now, here's, here's a good point, okay? Uh, I'm from down south. I was born and raised in Louisiana. There's one thing that I can never remember ever going to the dinner table, whether it be breakfast, lunch, or supper, but what we had bread. We did not. I used to think that, uh, that it was mandatory to eat bread. And one day, <laughs> I... I asked my mother, I said, why, why do we have biscuits ever, ever meal? I mean, they were good. my mother makes good biscuits, you know, big old cat head biscuits with syrup, and eat with them. and uh, I, I thought it was, it was religious, you know. She said, well, she said, if you eat lots of bread, you won't eat a whole lot of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> there was 10 kids in the family, so mama always made lots of bread. Look at John, St. John, I'm sorry, uh, Matthew. Chapter 6. Let me give you another scripture here that I think is really interesting. I hear people all the time say, Well, I read the Bible, but it doesn't do anything for me. And the reason is, it's like uh, I went to the doctor one day and I had a, a, a chest infection, had bronchitis. And so he gave me uh, some, some medicine, some kind of antibiotics, amoxicillin or uh, biaxin or whatever it was. He said, Now, I want you to take all of this. That's okay. And of course, when you're, when you're sick, you know, you take your medicine. Well, four or five days later, I got to feel a lot better. And there wasn't more pain. I wasn't coughing. And uh, so, you know what I did? Stop taking I stopped taking the medicine. And you know what happened? Got sick again. I got a relapse.